Okay, ferrofluid in the dish. As I say, it looks fairly innocuous now. Very, very strong magnet. Sorry. Oh, no. That hurt. Oh, dear. Get off. Oh, yeah. These magnets are very strong. Let's do the magic first. We are talking about ferrofluids. This wonderful, well, it looks pretty innocuous. It gets everywhere, it stains everything. This is evil black sort of oil-like fluid. About this time last year, I went into my um, daughter's school and played around with this, and I've never seen a bunch of eight-year-olds get so excited about a piece of science, so I really wanted to, to, to do a 60 Symbols video. And let me cut to the chase. There we go. Black oil evil. In fact, they say that you should dispose of it just as you dispose of oil. It's pretty dirty, it stains very badly. It's not toxic at all, so you don't need to stand back, Brady. It's fine, it's not quite level. Right, what we're gonna do now is capture the dynamics of how this ferrofluid responds to a magnetic field. I'm gonna bring the magnet in up underneath it and um, then take it away. And we're gonna look with a high-speed camera. I'm absolutely surrounded by cameras here, lots of lights. It's um, a very big sort of Hollywood production compared to the usual Brady carrying a um, camera on his shoulder. Let's go, so what I'm gonna do, oh. wow. Ready? So as you bring the, the magnet up from, from below, basically the influence of the magnetic field is changing and that's giving you different spikes as the ferrofluid feels the greater influence of the magnetic field. And balanced against that is the surface tension which is trying to sort of hold the liquid together. And so you've got these two competing effects. And from the periodicity of those spikes you can work out lots of fascinating things about the dynamics of the fluid and also the properties of the fluid. That's the problem. It's jumped out, so I brought the magnet, I stupidly brought the magnet to the top surface and it's jumped out and covered my hand. Mm. Look at how badly it's in. I now have to wash my hands. Go on. The fun bit is when you put the magnet on the top and watch it go <laughs> up to that. That's the fun bit. That's the bit I'm looking forward to. But then we will have to stop the video because I'll have to spend at least an hour cleaning myself. And where does magnetism come from? Well, magnetism comes from the interactions of spins. And what we basically do to represent it, what physicists do, so we represent, we take the electrons and we think of them basically as either being spin up or spin down. And what happens is when you put the magnetic field on, those spins align, right? And they align right across the solid. So with ferromagnets, with the magnets you're used to, when you take the magnet away, those spins remain aligned and you're left with what we call a permanent magnetic moment. In things called um, paramagnets, what happens is that when you bring the magnetic field in, you can align them, but then when you bring it away, they no longer remain aligned. That's exactly what's happening with these ferrofluids. So we're going to move away from considering the sort of individual atoms or the individual electrons and think about a nanoparticle which comprises, you know, tens of thousands, up to 100,000 atoms. And each one of those particles, the electrons in them, all those spins interact. And what happens in the particle is that the particle ends up, despite the fact that it's comprising lots and lots of atoms, ends up with one big net spin. We call it a single domain particle. Now what's happening in the absence of the uh, magnet in the ferrofluid, so just as, it stand, just as it is like here, those particles are bouncing around, bumping off other particles, moving around like you would expect, you know, particles in a liquid to do. And so the spin gets scrambled and they don't align. When you bring the magnet in, what's happening is you're getting the spins of those particles all to align. And you're seeing the collective response of all those particles responding to the magnetic field, lining up and interacting with each other. Take it away again, and you're back to the fluid. When I bring a magnet near you, why don't all your atoms and electrons stand to attention? Very good question, Brady. Certain things are magnetic, other things are not magnetic, and it depends on how the electrons are arranged in the solid. That's the key thing. Lots of organic material, we say it's diamagnetic, it's not ferromagnetic or not paramagnetic. And that's because basically the electrons are not free to align in the same way as they are in iron, for example, or other ferromagnetic materials. So the particles in this liquid are magnetite, so an iron oxide. And and what they're coated with is something called a surfactant, which means that um, the particles are, the surfaces of the particles are quite passive, and they come together, but then they don't chemically bond. It's what we call a physical interaction. It's a physical attraction. Um, no chemical bonding. And then 
when you bring the magnet away, they can release easily. And then they're bumping into each other in the solution, but they're not forming chemical bonds. So you might think that it's a fairly esoteric you know, product. You, you really haven't seen it before. But um, where it crops up all the time is in hard disk technology. Actually, the spindles that um, are associated with hard disks, where the, the hard disk is spinning around, that is lubricated, actually, with ferrofluid. So you have to get it first time, Brady, because I'm going to get covered in stuff. I'm going to bring it in above yeah. the, the ferrofluid. Yeah. Instead of putting the magnet from below, as we've seen before, I'm going to bring it in from the top. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Oh man, that was good from this angle. 